My name is Dr. Catherine Lucero, and I'm an assistant professor of medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medicine. I'm a transplant hepatologist at the Center for Liver Disease and Transplantation. Today, I'm going to talk to you about autoimmune liver diseases. So today we will talk about the diagnosis and treatment of the following conditions. Autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, formerly known as primary biliary cirrhosis, or PBC, and primary sclerosing cholangitis, also known as PSC. A little background about the liver and why I think it's the most important organ after the heart it's central to digestion and detoxification. It's the largest gland in the body. It weighs about three to four pounds. There's two lobes, a right lobe and a left lobe. And it's the only internal organ that can regenerate, meaning if there was some damage or after a surgery where some of the liver was removed, it can regenerate back to its original size. In addition, the liver helps the body digest food, store energy, make proteins, protects the body against foreign invaders, and removes toxins. Bile is created in the liver and is transported to the gallbladder for storage via bile ducts. And the bile ducts are important as we will talk about the diseases PBC and PSC. I wanted to settle what hepatitis is. Hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. Conversely, Bile duct inflammation is known as cholangitis. And there are many different causes of hepatitis. The most common causes are the viral hepatitis, such as B and C. Medications can also cause hepatitis. Alcohol can cause it. Autoimmune hepatitis can cause it. And there are also other rare causes. What it's important to know, it's not always transmissible to other people. I think that's a common misconception that I want to clarify. So what happens with inflammation and how do patients develop cirrhosis? On the left is a normal liver. It's nice and soft and spongy. If a liver is exposed to inflammation or hepatitis, over time there can be development of fibrosis or scar tissue if the hepatitis is ongoing. And over time, there's enough scar tissue that patients will eventually develop cirrhosis where the liver goes from being nice and spongy to hard and bumpy or nodular. And it's these patients with cirrhosis that are at risk for liver cancer. When patients develop cirrhosis or end-stage liver disease, these are the following complications. They can have jaundice or yellowing of the eyes, ascites, which is fluid in the abdomen that can leak out of the liver in the setting of a high pressure phenomenon with cirrhosis, known as portal hypertension, the liver removes toxins, so in the setting of cirrhosis, there is impaired clearance of certain toxins, including ammonia. And this is what we call hepatic encephalopathy, where patients have confusion, difficulty with memory, difficulty sleeping. Due to the pressure phenomenon from cirrhosis, there can be development of esophageal varices. So the third picture is a column of blood vessels in the esophagus, and these are at risk for bleeding and could potentially be life-threatening. Finally, liver cancer is also a complication of cirrhosis. If patients have any of these complications, they should be evaluated for liver transplantation. Autoimmune hepatitis is an inflammatory condition against the liver cells. It is not really known why patients develop autoimmune hepatitis, but it is thought to have a genetic and environmental predisposition. Unfortunately, patients may not have symptoms until liver disease is advanced. The diagnosis is made with blood tests, and if there's any question, a liver biopsy is performed to confirm the diagnosis. Treatment of autoimmune hepatitis is based on the severity of disease. And the mainstay of treatment is suppressing the immune system. The mainstay of treatment is suppressing the immune system. And this is done initially with steroids, commonly prednisone, followed by azathioprine or mycophenolate if patients cannot tolerate azathioprine. 
Treatment duration is for at least two years after normalization of liver tests. However, due to risk of relapse, treatment might be indefinite. If the disease advances despite treatment, patients are at risk for cirrhosis or liver cancer. Primary biliary cholangitis, or PBC, is a chronic autoimmune destruction of the bile ducts that can lead to cirrhosis. Symptoms commonly include fatigue or itching, and it can be diagnosed with blood tests alone if patients have an elevated alkaline phosphatase and presence of an abnormal antimitochondrial antibody. If there's any question, patients can be sent for liver biopsy, where one can see damage to the bile duct. The mainstay of treatment is ursodeoxycholic acid. This medication can improve histology, meaning the liver inflammation, and survival overall in patients with primary biliary cholangitis, or PBC, and it's a weight-based regimen. A new FDA-approved medication known as obeticholic acid can be added if there is an inadequate response to the ursodeoxycholic acid. However, if the disease advances, patients are at risk for development of cirrhosis or liver cancer. Finally, primary sclerosing cholangitis is an autoimmune destruction of the bile ducts. Some patients may be completely asymptomatic. However, some may present with itching, fatigue, or jaundice, which is yellowing of the eyes or skin. The diagnosis is made with MRI, where you can see an abnormal bile duct. Unfortunately, treatment options are limited and mainly supportive. There's no FDA-approved regimen. However, there are clinical trials underway looking for a cure. It's very important to have a colonoscopy at the time of diagnosis to evaluate for inflammatory bowel disease. If patients also have inflammatory bowel disease, the risk of colon cancer is much higher. If the disease does progress, patients are at risk for cirrhosis or liver cancer. Other complications of primary sclerosing cholangitis include bacterial cholangitis, where there is infection in the bile duct. This may require an endoscopy to access the bile duct, antibiotics for treatment, and likely hospitalization. These can be quite severe presentations and is an indication for liver transplant evaluation. Patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis are at higher risk for gallbladder cancer and bile duct cancer, known as cholangiocarcinoma. So your physician may recommend imaging of your gallbladder and liver on an annual or biannual or twice a year basis. Autoimmune hepatitis, PBC or primary biliary cholangitis, and PSC or primary sclerosing cholangitis are autoimmune conditions that attack the liver cells or bile ducts. Early recognition and treatment can slow the progression of autoimmune hepatitis and PBC. However, if the disease progresses, patients are at risk for cancer with development of cirrhosis. Unfortunately, there are no current treatments for primary sclerosing cholangitis. It's important to note that patients are at higher risk for colon cancer, especially if they have inflammatory bowel disease. And patients are also higher risk for gallbladder cancer and bile duct cancer, known as cholangiocarcinoma. So it's important to follow up with your physician to make sure that no cancer develops. I thank you for your time.